Welcome to Section 420, Talking Yankees. And in this episode, we're going to speak with Dan Kelly. He's a writer for Pinstripe Alley and provides great insight on the Yankee farm system. Hey, Dan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So um, you're a contributing writer to Pinstripe Alley. And with me, like, I don't know zilch about the farm system. So I just took an interest. You seem like to have a, a good keen eye on a lot of the you know, future Yankees and, of course, the recent draft. So um, you know, I just want to get a sense of, again, the draft that has recently happened. Um, what was I like, saw so your take in terms of, you know, the Yankees, who they drafted and um, any players that kind of, you know, that would, you know, that raise your eyebrow or say, hey, this guy could be like a future star for the team. Well, one thing uh, we think we've seen with the Yankees over the last few years is that it's not so much they draft for need at the major league level, which, you know, anything you read says that's that's kind of an insane thing with the way the baseball draft works and the timelines. But they definitely have been taking steps to draft for what they need at the minor league level. And in the last draft, we, we saw them address that pretty, pretty quickly when they um, went and grabbed Anthony Volpe, who um, on most draft boards, he was a little bit farther down, but the Yankees uh, scouts, I guess, just loved him. You know, he would have, you know, if you looked at a lot of the rankings that it had him more as a second round pick, but they grabbed him there at the end of the first round. They, uh, and he, you know, he, he had a rough start to his, uh, to his season, but he was picking it up. Um, and, and he actually played really strong for about his last two and a half weeks. And then unfortunately caught mononucleosis, which knocked him, knocked him out for the, you know, that's the problem with such a small sample size in the short seasons that we see was that, that was, um, you know, just a short sample, but he was showing that he was adjusting to the professional game and he was, uh, you know, putting up, starting to put up some, some really good numbers and everything that the Yankees saw. And their second round pick, they grabbed Josh Smith out of, uh, out of LSU, um, you know, from a solid college program that plays in the SEC, which is the toughest conference in the country for college baseball. And they grabbed Josh Smith. He went to Staten Island, did nothing but hit for the whole year. He, he looked like a really solid bat. And, uh, you know, he may end up being in a somewhat of a utility role. The, uh, a lot of the evaluations on him don't necessarily show that he'll, um, he'll stick at, at shortstop as long. But, you know, he, he has played third base and second base through his college career as well. But also they, they ran him out there every day at shortstop and, and – you know, they really uh, shored up the system there at that position. Now, when the Yankees draft, I guess traditionally, I mean, you kind of mentioned before, do, do they draft in terms of saying, hey, this is what our major league squad could use? Or it's just sort of like, hey, um, let's just get like the best player available and we'll just see if there's a spot open there is. If, if, if not, maybe because use this person as like trade, you know, put them in a yeah. package, them in a trade. Yeah, re really, I think the last three years you've seen them go with a focused – targeted approach in 2017 um 10 of their first 11 picks were pitchers they just went pitcher 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 fourth round they drafted a, a high school outfielder and then it was pitchers for the rest of that and then and if you had looked at the system at the time there was some need there to just build depth from the pitching side and and now we're you know you're starting to see the results from 2017 you know Clark Schmidt is the name everybody was talking about in spring training who you know, they would, you know, people were wondering if he had an outside shot to crack the roster um, once Severino and Paxton had their injuries and he looked really good in spring training. You know, he was that first pick that year and he was coming off Tommy John surgery. Nobody had him that spot on the board. And then um, the Yankees, you know, just kept doubling down with, with more and more pitching that year. And then the next year, um, there's definitely a, a need at catcher in the system. They had a, uh, they there just were there's not any options you know Gary Sanchez great Kyle Higashioka has shown that you know he's that upper level you know we'll find out more what he's going to be but beyond those guys there there was not a lot of catching depth in the in the minor league system so the Yankees went out with their first two picks in 2018 and took Anthony Siegler and Josh Bro and, and you know two two catchers and, and went from there and then the next year two shortstops so it definitely looks like they, they have this approach where, you know, it's, it's not a addressing major league needs, but they're, they're looking at where the system is. And, and in some cases, they also definitely double down with, uh, with how they do it with their international signings. Is when the year they drafted Bro and, and Siegler, they also signed uh, one of the top 
catchers out of the international market a month later. So they're definitely looking to build depth through through that means as well. What's um you know, obviously you know Schmidt's name's been you know been thrown around a lot. Like you said like you know they're promoing him a lot on yet on yes. Um, is it a situation where would they they would possibly um have him you know as a starter or is it a case of like well we want to break him in uh, maybe bring him in as a, a relief pitcher they they kind of um decide on that or is it or is this kind of like you know uh you know maybe we'll we'll see him later in the year as possibly a starter but we want to start him off in the minors we know it's going to be a shorter season and i think one thing for the yankee system is that takes the whole discussion on inning innings limits right off the table because um schmidt has he He's been working his way back from Tommy John. He and he's had a couple other minor injuries in the, you know, as he's come through the system, and, and he hasn't logged that really heavy major league starters workload, you know, where he's gone out and thrown 125 or 130 innings that you'd want to see coming through the minors. And and similar for Davey Garcia too, is um, both those guys, you know, their their innings cap is, is somewhat low, but this year there's going to be a shorter season. I think we're you know, fairly confident about that at this point. And, and to me, for both those guys, that, that almost opens up an opportunity because I think the Yankees would love for them both to start in the minors, get kind of get in their rhythm. And then, but I think those are the first two names really that are going to be on the tip of everybody's tongue when an injury pops up or, or some kind of opening in the rotation. And, and um, but, you know, with, with the innings limits and, and the, you know, part of that grind of the season off the table, you know, Clark Schmidt should have no problem throwing 120 innings. Davey Garcia should have no problem throwing 130 innings, as opposed to where you, if you had dipped into them, you know, in a full season, you might be looking at like, you know, 165 innings, and then all of a sudden you're limiting innings, you're managing starts, you're skipping starts and that type of stuff. So, so that, in that case, I think that actually helps both those players um, to get, get to the major league level. Uh, and actually, it's a good point you bring up. I didn't even think of that before. Just like, you know, with the innings limits, which, you know, drive some of the, the traditional and older baseball fans nuts. But, um, yeah, we're going to have a shorter season. So, again, I think you're not going to have to worry about managing that because, you know, yeah. you, don't, you don't really have to worry about a workload in, in August, stuff like that. Cause, um, so, actually, you know, that, that is very interesting. I didn't even think of that before. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it also works with uh, Mike King is another name. We saw him. He got two innings at the end of last year, um, right, right there at the end of September. Um, he was injured for a lot of last year. He, he rose through the system in 2018 after the Yankees acquired him in, from Miami, and he flew from high A Tampa through double A to triple A, and, and he was the minor league pitcher of the year, had the second lowest ERA in the entire minor leagues that season. And then, you know, last year he – he was uh, injured pretty early on in uh, spring training and he ended up throwing less than 50 total innings last year. So you don't know how he would have been managed this year, but he'll be also a, an option there sitting at triple a He, But, you know, and once again, with the innings limits, not coming into play that that opens up a lot for him where they might not look for him to, to manage him quite as much. They can kind of turn him loose a little bit more. Yeah. And, and also just, you know, just going back to Schmidt for real quick. Um, it's almost a benefit that he got the Tommy John surgery this early. I mean, they're, they're, you know, you hear him throw out these ideas for like all pitchers. They say all pitchers should get it. He might as well just get out of the way because it's probably going to happen anyway. And, you know, look what happened to Severino, Syndergaard, Sale. I mean, it just seems like at some point you need it. But then again, at the same case, I don't think you want to purposely give yourself a Tommy John surgery. Yeah. But, but it is a, a bit of a blessing in disguise if you do get, end up getting it early, though. Yeah, and it was just, you know, it's interesting you you read about the process, you know, when some of the stuff he said where it, it sounded like it, it kind of cratered him a little bit when it happened, where it happened. He was projected right there in that middle of the first round where the Yankees did end up taking him, but then to to see his arm, you know, blow out when he's, when he's staring at a first-round draft pick, you know, it, the surgery I think was almost exactly a month before the – before the draft that year. So that, that had to be a lot of uncertainty on him. And, you know, he, he's bounced back and, and you didn't see the dominating stuff really un, until last season. You saw very good stuff. And then last year he opened up and he started knocking out. He had a handful of nine strikeout games where he was doing that in like six innings. And then, you know, he moved up to double A at the, towards the end of the year. And he, he was just incredible. You know, I was, 
you know, watching some of the games that, you know, you can stream the games through MILB. They, they had the service. I, I was watching one game he had up in New Hampshire where he was just, he looked unhittable. It was like he, that stuff would have played in the Bronx on that, that day. I mean, it, it, when he was on, he was on. And now the next step for him is just locking it in consistently, start in, start out. And, and I don't think it's going to take long for him to be, be in the Bronx. That's good news because, you know, I mean, assuming Severino comes back as 2021 at some point, you could have like a nice young core. Of course, Cole's going to be there, obviously, for like the next eight years after this. So, I mean, you have Cole, Severino, Schmidt, maybe Debbie Garcia comes up. And, you know, we've been looking – I mean, you know, the Yan- what's been missed with these Yankees is kind of what they had, obviously, during the late 90s when you had this like four aces going out there every night where it was Pettit, Wells, Clemens, Cohn, El Duque. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can switch it around a little bit, but – the Yankees really been missing that for quite a while. Um, they always have some good pitches here or there, but they never had a good front, you know, rotation. Yeah, and it's because, you know, we've had the, the various big threes and not just a, on the Yankees side of things. It goes back to the to the Mets, you know, back in their, you know, history too there in New York where, you know, you, you hear about this big three group of pitchers that's going to come through and, and define the, the next era. And, you know, it's – Benuelos, Brackman, and, and uh, Patances. Then it was, you know, uh, oh, Phil Hughes, Ian Kennedy, Joe, Jabba Chamberlain was the other one. And, and it's, you know, I, I stumbled across a, a pretty great quote on that. It says, you know, essentially that they're fool's gold and, you know, one's going to underperform, one's going to get hurt, and the other one, you know, might be average. It, it You know, but that's where I start getting excited about the Yankee system now is we've, we've heard for years, you know, a couple of years now, how young the Yankee system is. And, and some of this pitching depth is starting to graduate to the upper levels of the minors. So they're, they're kind of in a position now where they can absorb, you know, if you see someone drop off with injury, it's, you know, you never want to see it, but with pitchers, you, especially, you know, that is going to happen. And, but there's, there are a lot of good arms coming and especially the, the rotation that was projected to start at high a Tampa this year, which, you know, is the same place Clark Schmidt and Davey Garcia started last year, that, that rotation was, was going to be incredible. And, and, you know, we just, there's even more uncertainty with the minor league season right now than there was with the, uh, and there is with the major league season, but, but that rotation, those guys had the chance to, you know, handful those guys to finish double a triple a and be right on the cusp of the major leagues next year. And in terms of Garcia, I mean, what's like the page on him? Uh, I mean, is it like, I would assume like a high 90s fastball and a breaking ball? Like what, what's his, uh, you know, what's his like mechanics? You know, really he's, uh, you know, he's a shorter pitcher. He's, he's only about 5'9", uh, and, and some people even say that might be generous. Um, but he, his, his fastball is really not, you know, he can touch 95 with it, but he's more sitting in 92 to 94 range. But it's it's the curveball and this and he just last year he developed a, a slider to go with it that gave him a, a different look and and those are the money pitches the the curveball is one of the, one of the highest spin rates in the minor leagues it, and it just moves and it's filthy misses bats and then he, he went out last year started throwing a slider early in the season and by the end of the year when Baseball America went and ranked all its best tools in the Yankee system. They rated his slider as the best slider in the Yankee system, and he really hadn't thrown it before last year. And Davey, because of the because of the just kind of insane strikeout numbers, he him more so than Schmidt is a is a guy I could see kind of being brought in in the bullpen role, where you could say, hey, let's and they they tested him out there at Scranton last year. He had some mixed results, or you know, a rough game. Then you know he he'd do really well, but you know, um, whereas. Smith more has the prototypical starter arsenal locked in and, and everything. Garcia, you could see him being the guy who, hey, we got two runners on. We need strikeouts. Let's, you know, bring him in and let him let him work on that. Especially, like I said, if he can if he can just cut cut the walks back a little bit. Yeah, and Quebec, you know, same thing. Like when they brought back Severino, um, you know, initially with the Yankees he had some success. Then he had the shoulder problem, and then they brought him back just out of the bullpen. <laughs> And yeah. he just came and blew guys away just because, again, you could just use one or two pitches. You don't need a whole repertoire of pitches to get through that because you just need to get one big out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and that's where, yeah, if he could, you know, limit to use his fastball curveball because, you know, or fastball slide, whatever he, he needs to do because, you know, whatever pitch he's feeling that day and, and, and that would work. And, you know, with the smaller frame, he, he's the one – 
the reason the scouts do question his long-term viability as a starter is, is the frame. They just don't know how he's going to hold up, uh, hold up to 165 to 180 innings. And, and, you know, until he gets there, we don't know. He hasn't had injury problems coming through the minors. So that is promising, but you know, at the same point, he's, he's maxed out just, you know, a little over a hundred innings uh, for a season. So, so there's still some unknowns there. So, you know, right now we have all this uncertainty of, you know, let's just say on the major league level, yeah. when they're going to play, how they do this. Now you got this new thing with the uh, three division teams, stuff like that. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but from, but from now minor league baseball, I mean, how, I yeah. mean, has it been any idea how they're going to roll that out if they even do? Yeah, not nothing firm because you know they're spread out to even more localities and everything and, and really it's I, I have not seen anything that looks like it's a like a an actual plan more than somebody thinking out loud you know just to try to get the everybody back spread back across the country um I I really think something will happen whether it happens all at the complexes down in Florida and Arizona you know, I, I could really see that be, you know, happening first. Cause I, I don't think these teams, once they start playing, they're going to want the minor leaguers playing as well. They're going to, you know, the, they don't want to lose a year of development on these guys or, you know, where these guys are sitting idle and um, you know, there, there's a, a lot of, maybe it's, will be inner squad game type things, but you know, there'll be something. I just don't know what it's going to look like right now. You know, <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, it does have ramifications because, I mean, you yeah. need these players to develop yeah. because that's just the whole system, whether yeah. you need them for your major league squad or at least you need to develop them to, hey, we need to, we need to include these guys in a trade. But if these players are going to be idle for a year, it's like yeah. it really it, it affects so many areas. It's like, all right, you know what? We're depending on this bringing up this AAA person or double-A person, yeah. but now we can't. So now we got to spend $4 million on Joe Schmo just yeah. to plug a hole. <laughs> Exactly. You know, once the major league season starts, there's got to be some kind of uh, triple A games happening just for that reason for injuries and, and uh, you know, bring people up and down or, or I don't know what that exactly is going to look like, but that there has to be some kind of competitive environment where, where those pitchers are stretched out to five, six, seven innings. So that if, if you need to go down and pull up a starter, you are pulling up somebody who's throwing real innings somewhere and, 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 and so what that that could happen at the complex. I mean, if you go a lot of these minor league complexes, they have a couple different fields. They could, you know, if they do inter squad stuff, you know, just mix it. It would essentially start to look like the extended spring training games or, or whatever that they have there. But you know, there there's a there's a lot of uncertainty there, and hopefully they can get these guys guys back on the field in, in a safe manner, of course, because it it, it really is. It's just so much uncertainty and it feels like so much changes day to day, week to week. So, so, um, yeah, let's just get a little to in terms of yourself. I mean, obviously you're a writer for the, um, pinstripe alley site. Um, but, uh, you know, what sparked your interest to, you know, write, get into interested in baseball and specifically minor league baseball, which is a very, you know, very t- <laughs> uh, unique, uh, kind of, a f- you know, expertise in the field. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up, um, upstate into a, you know, a, date myself well then 36 years old so I uh I was up there when the double a team was in Albany it was the Albany County Yankees and um um, I I have early memories of going going to the stadium there watching minor league baseball with uh family friends and uh I mean what a time to be in the Albany County Yankees uh my earliest memories are the manager of the team being Buck Showalter and Jim Lair my brother dug out for my son recently a ball that you know front and center it's got the whole team's autographs and the biggest one on it is Jim Lerritt's autograph off of there that he had gotten along the way and and you know that was around 1988 but um you know we we saw a lot of the guys who went on to play big roles there at the major league level come through so you know Bernie Williams Derek Jeter Posada Pettit they all came all came through there at that time, not to mention some other guy, Deion Sanders was there at one point. That was, you know, local news because he, you know, big deal. And, you know, just a lot of, a lot of these big time guys, but also, you know, something that always stuck with me was some of these guys who would come through and get all the hype in the world. And then nothing really ever came of it. They'd move up to AAA and either we'd never see them in the Bronx or they, they, they would, 
show up in the major leagues, get shelled a couple times and, you know, wait, wasn't that guy supposed to be the next greatest pitcher? Yeah. So, so somewhere in there, you know, it, it's kind of triggered a, a lifelong, you know, thought, you know, the, you know, the interest in minor league and enjoying the minor league atmosphere. So I, you know, love going to the minor league games, but then, you know, saying, okay, let's sort out what's real, what's not real on, on some of these guys as I've gotten older, looked at it, and then Pinstripe Valley gave me the opportunity to, to write about it on a regular basis. So, so it's been, uh, been a great experience there. That's a cool story. And, yeah, I mean, there's been so many Yankees that, you know, we've had high hopes for. Yeah. Uh, like, you go back to the, you know, big three of the, you know, early 2000s, as opposed yeah. to having, you know, Jabba, Hughes, Ian Kennedy. I guess, you know, Hughes had a decent career. I mean, if you yeah. overly look at it, Jabba, the potential was there, but – they screwed him up with making him yeah, a reliever, yeah. a starter. You know, yeah, they know. And then, but in terms of body work, I'll say my Ian Kennedy, even though he was the one that yeah. people didn't talk about the most, he probably had overall the most successful career of all of them. Yeah, he, he has. And I mean, you know, Phil Hughes was, you know, he, I heard some, an interview with him recently where he was talking about how once he pulled his hamstring and that no hitter he was throwing early on, he, he never could repeat that delivery the same way he had it again, you know, and that's, that's part of the whole prospect system is some of these guys get dinged up or something changes immediately. And then you real, you know, you might hear after the fact, they tried to pitch through an injury. They, they tried to do something that was, uh, or they, they just, you know, finally hit a level. They just peaked and couldn't, couldn't get those last outs. It, it really, it, it is fascinating to see because there's other guys you know, one uh, one example I'll use is Mike Ford. A couple years ago, I went to a Scranton game, and uh, I really hadn't heard too much about Mike Ford. I'd seen the name in some box scores. I wasn't writing for Pinstripe Alley yet, so I was following but not digging in as much as, as I as I do now. And uh, well, first inning, he hit a bomb, and it was just like, who's this guy? And you start looking him up, and you're like, this guy's got more walks than he has strikeouts in the minor leagues. It's like, and he's crushing it for power and like nobody's even paying attention to him. He's not on a single prospect ranking. He's not anything. And, and it kind of, you know, then he got pulled in the rule five draft to Seattle and it was almost like, Oh boy, they just, they just lost a good player. And he came back and, you know, he's a guy who then struggled through some injuries in, in 2018, but then, Last year when he came up, it kind of felt like a secret where it was like, hey, this guy's going to hit. He's going to get on base. He, he's he's a real bat. You know, you know, pay attention to him. And, and, and you know, his first go around, he got on base, even though he, the bat wasn't necessarily the impact bat yet. And then by the end of the season, when he got that last call up, he, he just went off. And it was like, you know, he he was – a real bat you saw it and it was like okay let me dig into this let me look more it's very uh very interesting player with a lot of a lot of talent there no no totally and he was one of the guys you know that you know with the yankees all the injuries they had last season he was one of yeah. the unsung heroes came up hit some big dramatic ninth inning home yeah. runs and yeah. tying games and you look at him physically late like i always say physically they poke fun at him. he looks like a softball player he doesn't really look like <laughs> this great athlete but yeah you know, yeah, I mean, he's a high on-base percentage. He, you know, he pokes home runs here or there, and he's just a good player. And actually, I like him at first base a little more than Luke Voigt. Uh, I mean, I like Voigt, but I see Voigt, you know, again, he's got these hernia issues all the time. And yeah. look at him physically. Yeah, he's a strong guy. But I think over the long run, I think Mike Ford will ultimately probably take more at-bats away from him. Just, you know, again, also being a left-hander in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how they construct the roster coming out. But, yeah, I think – I don't – I expect Ford to hit and hit just fine this season when he gets his chance. And, you know, with, with the injuries the Yankees were suffering in spring training, it looked like he was going to, you know, be, he would have been there opening day with Stanton down, with Judge down. Um, Hicks would have, you know, still out. Every All the shuffling that would have gone on with that, I was like, well, Mike, you know, he'll be there. He'll play a lot of first base and a lot of DH early on. And, you know, now now whenever they do get started, Judge will likely be back, Stanton will be back, Hicks may even be back opening day now. So, and, and Ford's sitting there with two minor league options and a very crowded and talented roster. So, it, you know, I, I I know he'll hit when he's there. It's just a matter of when that when that chance comes, and that's you know it, that's got to be tough on him because you know what to. To put up those numbers that he put up down the stretch, and then think you might be back in Scranton again, 
this year or whatever the minor leagues looks like this year. That that's that's a tough spot for for a guy, but you know he's kind of proved that he can play that play the game and be ready when he's called upon. No, totally, and I think he will at some point be back because you know someone's gonna pull a hammy or something. They'll yeah, need him exactly. So, just real quick, only got a couple minutes left. So you mentioned yeah. before he has two options left, and you hear all the time, well, they sent them all, they bring them all, the guy didn't have any options. Yeah. What does that exactly mean when they say they had <laughs> an option to play to bring them up and all that, you know, yes. jumbo? So when a player is added to the 40-man roster, he gets um, three option years. So any time in that year, they can send them up and down as many times as they wish. And, and there's a few caveats to them, and, and I, I don't have them written down in front of me, but essentially they're – the time in uh, September, you know, there, there's rules with that. And, and then there's also the September time doesn't count for necessarily for an option year. And then there's a, a amount of consecutive days that they have to go back to the minors right now. So if you look at Tyler Wade and Clint Frazier, they both um, made their debut. And if you looked at it quickly, you'd think they were out of options, but they actually both still have one minor league option left because um, – some, when Clint was fit, battling through his injuries uh, in uh, 2018 when he had the concussions, he, he was on the major league injured list, and he not, didn't go down to the minors long enough to, to trigger that last option after he was called up. And uh, uh, a player like Wade, um, when he was first called up back in uh, 2017, it was middle of the season, and then um, uh, the, the way it worked out, so that they both still have, uh, you know, have options, but generally it's three years up and down. And I think off the time I have, I believe it's 20 consecutive days for that option to trigger that they've been sent down in, in the minors. So, so that's how it works. Like I said, there's little caveats, but generally uh, three years is, is the thing. And, and that's where some of the players who start on the, the 40 man this off season, like uh, Davey Garcia just got added to the 40 man roster this off season. So this was, his first year of, of options, but a player like Albert Abreu, who's been pitching, he's been on, this is his last minor league option year. So, so he's been in high A and double A the last few years pitching and, and hasn't been able to kind of finish cracking the code on his control and command. And, but you know, this is his last year. Yankees will have a decision on him to make as the year moves forward. It, it's as to whether he's still showing the improvement to, to warrant that you know, continued roster spot because after this year he would have to be in the majors or, or traded or released off. So. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate the insight of that as well as the insight yeah. on the Yankee farm system. And uh, again, hopefully we see some of these players up in the next coming years and uh, rockets such, such as Clark Schmidt. So yeah. uh, Dan, again, um, Vail, you know, check them out on pinstripe alley. Yes. Uh, plenty of articles, great insight on the Yankee and overall just minor league baseball. And uh, thanks for joining us and have a great day. Yeah, thanks for having me.